Hey friends, welcome to today's video. I'm excited for this one. This is like a version of opinions on popular fragrances, except I'm gonna focus exclusively on sampling experiences for three popular houses. One is Nishane, the new Nishane X line. There are five new releases from Nishane. I'm gonna also share some thoughts on gritty fragrances, which have been super popular here on YouTube and also on Instagram and Twitter. And then I'm gonna talk about four fragrances from the house of Lise. I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Lis, Lise, whatever. We're gonna go with Lise for this video. And if you know different, feel free to drop it in the comments. So we're gonna start with Nishane X. I don't know that there are very, very many reviews of this line on YouTube yet. There are some, but I, listen, I was really excited for the Nishane X release. There are five in the sample set, the discovery set, of which I own three and I have had the fourth, the originals of them rather, and I didn't have the fifth and I'll share why. The sample set may be hard to get a hold of. In fact, the Nishane X line may be difficult to find on websites in the States. So please check out So Avant Garde. If you're interested, I am a partner with So Avant Garde. They're not sponsoring this video. I purchased a little set with my own dollars. And this is $50, y'all. So please feel free to use my discount code, Veronica20. I'll link all of that in the description box and in the pinned comment for you. You will want to use that discount code because these are pretty pricey fragrances and because they just hit the market it'll be nearly impossible to find them on discount on any of the gray sites so this particular collection of samples costs 50 dollars, and you get five and then with the actual bottles a 50 mil bottle is going to cost you 270 retail again use veronica 20 for 20 percent off of that and then 395 for the full 100 ml bottle. So they're pretty pricey on retail. I will say worth the money. These are nice quality fragrances that are going to project and last you quite a while, just like the originals. Some of these even more so. Let's jump into my ranking from fifth to first place. I'm gonna start with Hachavad. This fragrance, I never purchased a full bottle, original full bottle of. I, I don't think I did, maybe I did and don't remember, but I don't think that I did. This is a fragrance that the original smelled very mossy, like a shipper fragrance. It was woody. It was a little too masculine leaning for my taste. And I just didn't enjoy the way that it smelled on me. It's something that I would love to smell on a gentleman, my husband in particular, but he's not into this scent profile. This smells almost identical to if Aventus for him and Aventus for her met in the middle and split their differences. It's a very nice fragrance, this new one, the X version. I would say in this fragrance, I get more of the citrus amped up. It's a very clean, fresh, crisp, very crisp, clean smelling fragrance. I get some woodiness as it continues to dry down that, that gets amped up and some patchouli. And I don't get any of that sort of mossy feel that I got from the original Hachibat. So in that sense, this one is much preferred, but I will say this is still not quite my scent profile. I had La Femme Aventure, is that what it's called from Al Haramein, which is a dead on dupe for Aventus Her, which I enjoyed, but not enough to keep it in my collection and ended up selling that off. It's in a happy new home. I think it's a lovely fragrance, not one that I would reach for often. So that is why Hachivat is in position number five. Really fantastic fragrance, but not necessarily one that I would reach for. And so therefore, I'm not interested in a bottle of this, but it's very nice. And also very long lasting and has very nice projection. So you're gonna get performance out of all five of these. I can tell you that right now. So then I did have a bottle of the next one and ended up selling it and I'll share why, because it's a very nice fragrance. This is Wulong Cha, Wulong Cha, which everyone knows as a citrus tea fragrance. The original Wulong Cha is super nice. I have a lot of fragrances that are in that similar sort of scent profile that I will probably reach for more. So I ended up selling off my Wulong Cha, but it's, it's very nice, very non-offensive, inoffensive, non-offensive, inoffensive whichever <laughs> citrus tea fragrance that's a super easy wear particularly here in the summer as it's high heat humidity all of that it does a fantastic job in the heat and you can also wear it in the winter so wulong cha x imagine wulong cha amped up even more with this version i get more of a pronounced citrus from the fragrance the tea is an accompanying player i think maybe the tea poked through a little bit more in the original i don't quite remember but i know that this is like a beautiful citrus bomb in my opinion with the tea accompanying it but the the citrus in this one is definitely the four runner lead player lead actor in the fragrance it's very fresh. It's very comforting. It's, it even has a warmth to it. I think for me, that is the one big differentiating factor between the original and this version, that there is 
a subtle warmth in this fragrance. Not sure where it's coming from in terms of the note composition, but really enjoyed this. I still don't know if I'd like to get a bottle of this. Again, I'm sort of pairing back my citrus collection to ones that I just love the most. Why is that? I had this period of my life where I wore citrus, 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 almost day in and day out. And I'm moving into loving other scent profiles for right now. Maybe next year I'll go back to citrus. I don't know. But for right now, this is sitting in the number four spot with an endorsement from me. I would say Hachivat X. If you're into the Aventus profile, it's a definite thumbs up. If you're not, stay away from that one. And then for Wulong Cha, you definitely need to be a citrus lover to enjoy this fragrance. Let's keep going. Okay. And then in the number three slot is one that people love or hate the original of, and it's Ani X. So I do own Ani. It is a super, for me, spicy vanilla fragrance. It has a lot of sort of kick and zing to it that if you're not into that, it can be a little bit off-putting. I think is it ginger or something like that in the top of that? And maybe some cardamom or those kinds of notes that really come off super spicy in your face. I will say that the original Ani has this period of opening the opening part of it until it starts to dry down that I find to be a little bit harsh. And on the masculine side, it's the deep dry down of Ani that I have come to enjoy, but I have to be in the mood for it. This is not, you know, some people love Ani like they love cake and they reach for it often. <laughs> Sorry. They reach for it often. So I don't reach for Ani often because there are other vanillas that are softer and easier to get along with straight out of the spray experience, right off the spray experience than, than Ani is. Ani X, so it has very mixed reviews. Go check out the reviews on Fragrantica. There aren't a lot on there right now. There may be, I think, under 10 reviews when I'm filming this video and they're all over the place. Some people love it, some people hate it, some people prefer the original. And a lot of people have talked about a patchouli note in the Ani X. So for me, and let me know if you've experienced this too, I'm curious. I found this to be very similar to Lyra, almost like the wilder older sister of Lyra that has a little bit more spice and kick. So if this and Lyra are twins then, and I'm not saying that they are, but this is the sort of naughtier one that's dragging Lyra out to the nightclubs. <laughs> and staying out late all night and getting them in trouble. This is a very spicy, zingy opening. I get lemon, I get other citruses that are very zingy, very bright, very in your face. And it has this really awesome thick vanilla to it. Do I get some patchouli in this? Yeah, I would say I get a little bit of earthiness, especially as it dries down a little bit more. It has a tiny bit of a woody aspect to it too. So which do I prefer, Ani or Ani X? I will say right now, upon sampling, Ani X is uh, inching out ahead of Ani, okay? Really nice fragrance. If you're a citrus and vanilla lover and you want it to have some body, some kick behind it, so this one comes with that kick from perhaps the patchouli or some other woody notes in here that give it some depth and intrigue even more so than the original Ani, but they're both really nice in different ways. I find this one actually to be a little bit more feminine, which is interesting because the reviews on Fragrantica say that this one leans more masculine. So I just wanted to present all those different aspects. This is one that I might consider picking up, Ani X, and maybe selling the original. I'm not sure, we'll see. I'll have to do like a side-by-side -side test of both of them, but definitely check them out. In the number two slot for Nishane X, the discovery set is 100 Silent Ways, X. So I have the original of that. It's a beloved fragrance of mine. I will say that with the original 100 Silent Ways, I didn't love it on first try or I liked it and thought it was just like a generic pleasantness. And then I had to retry it and ended up falling in love with it. Very soft, really sort of thin tuberose with a little bit of fruitiness at the top from a peach note and mostly like a vanillic fragrance from me, like a powdery vanillic fragrance that I really, really enjoy. I think it's highly feminine. And so I ended up getting, before sampling it, I I ordered it with the sample set, Nishane 100 Silent Ways X, 100 Silent Ways X. So I have to say, I prefer the original labels to this. I'm not really super crazy about the whole like X. You know what this reminds me of? If you're an 80s kid, did you ever watch the show V? Like with the aliens, the V? <laughs> Wasn't there like a big V that came on? Anyway, that's a whole other conversation. But I will tell you, so a lot of people have compared this fragrance to the original saying that it smells like the original with a little bit of leather. And I think that that is generally true as a description. You do get uh, what I would say is a very sort of soft muted leather. It's not animalic in the sense that you're going to smell like cowhide, a saddle, the inside of a brand new leather bag, leather seats in a car. <laughs> nothing like that. There's just sort of a really soft leathery aspect to this, almost like someone has 
shine their new leather shoes off in the distance and you're walking by and get a little bit of whiff of that that kind of a thing i do think that the vanilla in here is still really a nice player as well as some soft florals and it's a gentle fragrance overall that i really enjoy wearing so it's like 100 silent ways with a little bit of edge to it so if you wanted to wear 100 silent ways during the day and take this one out for dinner to just have a little bit more oomph and sexiness to it very nice fragrance i would definitely say consider picking this up but i have to say the one that is in the number one slot for me is fan your flames x i'm not going to get a bottle and i want to share why although i may change my mind in the future <laughs> and it's because i have the original fan your flames which is it smells to me like the most yummy part of barbecue air along with some coconut along with some boozy notes. There's something really intoxicating about Fan Your Flames, the original. I purchased it for Hubby. It smells amazing on him. Makes me wanna just eat his skin off, but he doesn't like it for some reason. It just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't float his boat and it's unfortunate because I like it. So I've had it on my shelf and I have worn it a few more times since purchasing it for him. And every time I wear it, he's like, what do you have on? I'm not that crazy about that, babe. And I'm like, shucks. I was hoping to convince him to fall in love with it because I do like it. It's like a gothic coconut fragrance <laughs> to me. The coconut isn't really prominent in the original, but it is there and it adds just the smoothness along with that booziness. Maybe there's a little woodiness in it, but I do get like that something just delicious about barbecue air. I don't know, y'all. It just works. So then friends, Fan Your Flames X is an even more amped up version of Fan Your Flames. I'd love to get this, but I have a feeling it would have the same reception in this house. So I'm not going to play myself and purchase a full bottle of this. But you know, maybe you never know what ends up on Veronica's shelves. But this is an even deeper, sexier, sultrier version of Fan Your Flames, which I already found to be intoxicating in that same way. So here the coconut lasts longer and it's more, maybe even more creamy and prominent of a note in this fragrance than it is in the original. And you get a lot of the darker notes, the rum, the tobacco. There's even a sweetness in this fragrance. There's a little bit of woodiness. It's one of those that I can see my husband wearing it and me just really snuggling deep into his neck if he loved this fragrance. He doesn't, and thankfully he has other fragrances that have that same effect on me, so it's not like we're missing out. But I think this is a banger of a fragrance, and I would say my favorite from this Nishan AX bunch. So that's my coverage of those five. I will be selling my Discovery set on my Mercari, which is linked down below, or you can get a fresh set, like I said, from So Avant Garde with the code Veronica20 for 20% 20 off. Let's go on to Gritty. So I tried five from the House of Gritty. It has been getting a lot of airplay here on YouTube and on Instagram. The bottles are simply gorgeous. Some of the names on these are adorable as well. I have ordered additional samples. I'm a little hard-headed, and when I'm determined to like something from a house, gosh darn it, I sample away until I find that thing. <laughs> so we're going to start with two that I've talked about in other videos. One is Syracuse, which I heard was supposed to be this fresh, fun, summer fragrance. And I love the bottle. The blue of the bottle is just... I. I like a good blue moment, you all. But there was something about this fragrance that was really aggravating for me, especially in the opening. I found it to be metallic and sharp, and there was something about it that just didn't work for I me. I just couldn't get with this fragrance. It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting this sort of fresh, aquatic feel to match the look of the bottle. Do the notes look like they're fresh and aquatic? I don't even remember, to be honest with you, but I think there were some green notes in there too, some floral notes. So I was wanting this uplifting, vibrant, bright experience for the summer that I just didn't get. So this was an, an absolute no for me, and I don't think that this is a mass appealing fragrance either. I think a lot of folks that would try this might have a, an issue with it. Then I also tried Gossip Night, which is supposed to be this peachy, fruity dream of a fragrance that a lot of folks really enjoy. I hated this sampling experience, and that's a strong word. I don't say that about a lot of fragrances. Maybe in the entire time I've been doing these videos, there's a handful of fragrances out of the hundreds that I've sampled that I could say I just like immediately hated. This felt like a headache in a bottle right away. It smelled to me a little bit like stale hairspray and grape juice powder with what I call metal shavings from when you were in school, elementary or middle school, and you had the metal shavings and you had the magnets and you were trying to move them around on the tray. <laughs> the way that those metal shavings smelled, something in this fragrance gave me that. Now I have had that experience with peach 
in some of the fragrance, like recently trying the original Tresor that has the heavy peach note. I've gotten that where I didn't get that in the past. So it may just be something about the way that I smell differently today at this age than I did in my earlier days. I don't know. But this was a cold fragrance for me that just, like I said, felt like a headache in a bottle. And it was an absolute no, even though I know folks love it here on YouTube and Instagram, it's getting a lot of playtime. I tried Chantilly. Love the name of this fragrance. It reminds me of, is it called Chantilly cream or something like that? But like a fluffy sort of cream is what comes to mind for me. I thought this was a very nice mass appealing fragrance. It came across for me clean, soapy, soft, and very easy going. Some folks have accused this fragrance of smelling like a body spray. God forbid. You know, nobody wants to be paying 200 and some odd dollars for a fragrance that smells like a body spray that you can get at Bath and Body Works. No offense to Bath and Body Works. I want me some good Bath and Body Works also. But at that price point, you maybe want a different kind of experience. Regardless, I thought this was a nice fragrance. It sat well on me. It made me happy. It gave me good feelings. And I thought that it was one of like those that I would put on a maybe list for purchasing later. So I'm not quite sure, but it definitely was a pleasant experience to sample. Then there are two from this house that I just love by name alone. One is called Tutu. But we just take a second for that girly moment of the pink bottle and thinking about wearing tutus and being cute with your little tool and your ballet slippers and all of that. It's just, it does something for me. The Barbie movie is coming out this summer. I don't know if I'm going to watch it, but then again, you know, Netflix, it might end up at the house. <laughs> So there's definitely sort of a pink moment happening this summer. This was a nice fruity, musky, almost creamy fluffiness. Like if fluff can be creamy, this fragrance gave me that. But I found it soft. It had some projection and some longevity, but definitely not super long lasting or anything like that. And I felt like the feel of the fragrance and the projection of it was soft. Again, that's from a sampling experience. I might get a wild hair and purchase this one or the next one. It was pretty. So, you know, it had something in the opening and maybe there's a grapefruit note in there. Maybe there was something about the grapefruit that just felt a little different. Like one of these notes is doing its own thing <laughs> in comparison to the entire composition. But I will say that as it settled down on my skin when I sampled it, it was really nice. So this is a sample that I'll probably revisit again and or maybe buy a bigger decant of to see if I want the full bottle. And then I really enjoyed my sampling experience of Tutu Blanc. What another pretty name. Like think about all things girly and pink, but even more demure and delicate and lacy around the edges or something like that. This, I think, is a mass appealing fragrance on the opening. It's a very cute bottle. The name is adorable. This was sweet, a bit fruity. I found it to be a very sort of girly pink fragrance, but it was very, very light, like super soft going on the skin. And in terms of projection was barely there. So some people like that. Some people prefer a skin scent or something that is very close to them that you have to kind of be very intimate in their bubble to smell. They don't want to be projecting out into other people's spaces. So for those of you that are like that, or you need something for the office or whatever, this may be a great option. I thought that this got soft a little too quickly for me, but I'd like to sample it again. I did think it was a pleasant experience and would think about it. So this is a maybe. Of the two, I think I probably right now would prefer Tutu to Tutu Blanc only because Tutu Blanc was so pale and soft of a fragrance, but man, was it a lovely little experience while it lasted. So next we're going to go to the house of Lise and I will also be putting this discovery set of four on my Mercari soon. If you're interested, check it out. This house has gotten a lot of playtime on Instagram in particular. I haven't seen it a whole, whole lot on YouTube, maybe here and there, but on Instagram, this thing just blew up. <laughs> I do like the simplicity of the bottles on these with the round tops, you know, nothing ostentatious or crazy if you like sort of a minimalist look. This bow fragrance that we're going to start off with is mass appealing in my opinion. I found it to be linear, like a linear woodiness with a little bit of yellow floral and a tiny bit of smokiness to it. I don't think this is for me. I think this would be awesome on my husband. Now, one strange thing about this fragrance is even though it had a little bit of a smokiness, it reminded me somewhat of green Irish tweed. If you've smelled that fragrance, there's something about those two that they have something in common there with the maybe the woodiness and this sort of simple linear aspect to it. 
So I was not very impressed with Beau as a fragrance. It's a fragrance that's known for lasting a very long time, if that matters to you, but it has very little projection off of the skin. So another one of these sort of subtle, very tiny bubble fragrances that will probably take you through a whole day if you like that sort of clean, almost pencil shaving or cedar shavings kind of a smell like hamster cagey type of a thing, which can be a nice smell for some folks. So that was Beau. I also tried the fragrance called Floating. I don't think that this would be a mass appealing fragrance. I found this one to be incredibly subtle and just dramatically soft. There was something so, so soft about this fragrance, light and ethereal. I wrote down Pretty Rose Soap for this fragrance in my spreadsheet here where I keep all my samples that I've tried and my copious notes about them. So I was not really impressed with this fragrance. And considering that these fragrances run, I think it's in the $160 range or so for a full bottle. Not that that's a ton, a ton of money, it just depends on who you are and what your budget is. This was pretty soft. In fact, the whole line just came across pretty soft to me. So the next one is called Rose Struck. This is also, in my opinion, not very mass appealing, although also not offensive. Like none of these fragrances came off as being ones that would offend anyone in any space, any time. So if that's your aesthetic and you want a fragrance that is easy to put on and you know it's going to be okay and no one's going to dislike it, here you go. This might be the house for you. I found Rose Struck to be a sharp but clean rose that became a very, very pale skin scent in no time where I was having a hard time even detecting it. So the performance on this one was very, very lackluster like the name of it, Rose Struck, but this really did nothing for me. It didn't scratch like any fragrance itch that I would have anytime, anywhere in the history of my sampling experience. <laughs> this one from this line is called Studied. I also don't think that this is a mass appealing fragrance. What I got from this was a new book that had not sold. It had been sitting on the shelf. You know, you go to Barnes and Noble or other bookstores and there are shelves that have been sitting there for a while. They still have that new book smell, but they've also gotten aged a tiny bit because they've been sitting on the shelf for a while and you open them and it takes you a second to get acquainted to that smell that wafts up. <laughs> it was that kind of a smell with this really faint lingering sweetness to it. Of the four, I have to say that this might be the most interesting for me in terms of being something different that I don't have in my collection. It's in the same vein of like paper from commodity that gives you the sense of paper, like from a paper mill into a ream of paper. This kind of gave me that new book sense. So that had been sitting for a while. It wasn't a brand new fresh off the press book. I've been sitting on the shelf for a while. I've said that three times now. So folks, that brings me to the end. A reminder to check out So Avant Garde for the Nishan X collection. My top picks being 100 Silent Ways X and Fan Your Flames X. Those of you that are Ani fans may want to check out Ani X. Those of you that are Citrus Tea fans may want to check out Wulong Cha X. If you're into the Aventus profile, Hachivat X will be your zhuzh. For the House of Gritty, my top picks are Tutu first and then probably Chantilly and then Tutu Blanc third. And then from least study, quite frankly, is the most interesting of the bunch that I sampled. Let me know your thoughts. Have you had a different experience? Do you own any of these? Would you like to say a different word on their behalf? Drop your experiences in the comments so that our fragrance friends here can hear your thoughts or read your thoughts rather and get a different opinion. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, friends.